Welcome to Pressure Points. Our topic is a review of OpenAI's new Atlas browser, their first foray into the browser business. And before I get in the review, I want to bring it back to the public tech markets is that since OpenAI made this announcement on October 21st, shares of Google are up 6.5% compared to the NASDAQ up 1.5%. So investors take away from this, even almost before they've had time to play around with it, is that Google is going to be able to navigate it or and looking forward to Google's earnings next week, which based on comments from Liz Reed, they had a search in a recent pod on Wall Street Journal. It seems like there is room for optimism for their search business and the commentary about search in the December quarter as well. So Google shares doing well, uh, despite the fact that they have a competitor, a new browser in town. So we're going to talk about that browser. Uh, before we get into it, I'm just going to give you the high level takeaways is this is an advanced browser, the most advanced browser out there. Uh, that means that there's a geek factor, a high geek factor to using it. Uh, we found it unreliable, but has huge promise, huge potential. And so if you're somebody who likes to hear about cutting edge tech stuff, stick around. If you're somebody who wants to talk about stuff that you can put into action today, you can drop because I don't think it's a mainstream browser today. It will get there, but it's just not there today. So as far as the setup of this is you have to have a Mac. It only runs on Mac. You have to have their Tahoe OS running, which came out in the middle of September. So there's a process to getting up to speed to even be able to download and, and use the browser. And once you do that and get things rolling, you'll find that it wants access to your disk. So basically to be able to look at your drive, the uh, you have an option to run this without using that. It only uses information from inside a browser. But if you give it disk access, you're going to get more out of it. And it does warn you that that there's some vulnerabilities in terms of getting hacked through that. But I and Brian, uh, the ones from Deepwater who had tested this, we both gave it full access just to make sure we get the whole experience. And kind of the two big selling points around this browser from OpenAI's perspective is it has memory and separately it has an agent built into it that can get work done for you. So on the memory front, just to kind of quickly cover that piece, is that uh, the idea is that it remembers interactions and can uh, understand and give you insight. So for example, uh, it has the ability to look, since it did my disk, has the ability to look into different websites that I have logins to, including uh, like Gmail. And I've asked for uh, what was an interaction that I had with this person. I can't remember when that interaction was. Kind of these high level kind of mystery questions that would be helpful really in a search context. And it really struggled with it. I think it's part of its indexing and it takes time. So I wasn't particularly impressed by the memory piece of it. The concept of it I think is super helpful or be really valuable, but I don't think we're there yet. In terms of the agent uh, piece of it, so they came out with operator back in January. And that's the ability of uh, their system to essentially take over your browser, take over the cursor and use your browser as like a window to the world. And the uh, we tested it back at the beginning of the year and it largely acted like we saw it earlier in the year. And I'll go through some examples that we did just to give you some context about how these agents work. So uh, the first example was Brian does these Apple lead time checks. He looks at eight different countries to look at the lead times on the new iPhones on a daily basis. So we get a sense about how demand is tracking versus a year ago. And it would be a great use case for having a bot, having the agent within Atlas to go and do this. And so uh, Brian initially did it with some loose instructions and it failed. And then over a period of a day, uh, got it to a point where it could get some of the information in some of the countries. So it was not particularly reliable, but it was able to get to a point where it could go to these different websites. There are different languages on these websites, as I mentioned, eight different countries. So understandable why there was some struggling involved there. 
one of the disappointments was as he was going through this, he asked Atlas to remember the instructions that ensured him that he would. And the next day when he picked it up and asked to run it again, it was unsuccessful. It did not remember the instructions. So he had to go back and reprompt. And we put that in the category of a more advanced ask of the bot today and something that it failed on. So uh, maybe we thought, let's go to the other end of the spectrum and look at some use cases that it should do better on and potentially pass on, which is commerce related. In fact, that did happen. So when we search for products, by the way, we did not get blue links. We did not get some advertising type of uh, a business that is presenting itself. It's been uh, much more of the consulting piece like you'd see with GPT today. Now that eventually is probably going to happen. They'll compete more directly with Google, but we're not seeing that today. The commerce examples that we gave one easy place to start is to ask it to book flights. And in this case, we asked it, uh, gave it a range of months, asked for direct flights to a certain place and find the best options. And I would say it, it did a, a nine out of 10 job. It was helpful. It was nice not to have gone through the hassle. Um, there is a piece of it where there's a trust factor to it. When I saw it and saw the prices uh, were like surprisingly low, I actually would went back and checked on the, uh, the, the proper websites to confirm that in fact, these were the prices. And so I found that piece, that example, you know, find the cheapest flight as helpful, but it also revealed a bias that I have, which I still don't fully trust the machine that it's going to give me the right answer, but overall scored well within that. Separately started to use it with uh, in buying a shopping list through Amazon. So I directed it to go to Amazon and uh, to actually go through and check out. Now, the first time it didn't do it because I hadn't logged in inside of Atlas. So once I did that login, I could give it a list of things that I wanted it to purchase and it would take it right from searching for items, put it in the cart and uh, checking checking out and, and ordering things. I was going back and having to cancel things, but it, it, uh, it found the things and surprisingly found the stuff that I would have probably purchased too. I gave an example of trying to find a floodlight and a tarp and examples of products that there are a lot of different options and I felt like it found uh, not necessarily the best, but one of the best options for that. And so was really impressed. Again, there's a trust factor there to, to doing this, but it was able to take it from an instruction, a prompt, all the way to actually making the order. Uh, so th those were a great example. And then uh, I think the most, I would say it did a, eight out of 10 on that Amazon uh, example. And then there was an example of, I had a concept, I wanted to build something. I wanted to build a mounting system for a floodlight. And I asked it to design a, a bracket out of wood and other materials and uh, purchase that at a local hardware store. And it's like a competitor to Home Depot, at Menards. And in this case, uh, it went, it came up with a design. It didn't do like a diagram of the design. It gave like instructions about how to long to cut each piece and where to uh, fix on each bracket. And then it found the brackets, it found the wood, it put it into the cart. I actually went in and purchased it, but it did not, um, I didn't give it instructions to formally go and, and check out, but effectively it took a concept and did shopping around it. So. I consider that uh, an example of something that was a little bit more advanced. I think it did a good job on it. There still was like a question. I didn't actually go and look at the instructions and say, will this actually work? But there's still this bias that I have that, you know, is it going to be uh, game time? Is it going to actually give the correct answers? Do you trust it? So as uh, that was, those are some of the, I think, more uh, illuminating examples of the use case. We use it a lot of other times and to the point where our $20 a month subscriptions kind of hit the wall. And that's another piece to this is that they do have limitations to how much you can use the agent feature. And then we, we were timed out for a month, which is disappointing. We could upgrade to a more expensive version at $200 a month that could give us unlimited, but we're not gonna do that at this point. 
And so I think that's another piece to remember is that they're kind of metering the usage through uh, the, the paywall. But in uh, just to kind of bring it full circle is that the concept of bringing memory and bringing agents into a browser is unique. It's something that ultimately Google with Chrome and what Apple's going to have to do with Safari, they're going to have to respond to this because over time, as you use these more, this is an, uh, the, an, another important takeaway, as you use the browser more, it gets smarter and it gets just takes friction out and you also trust it more over time. And so that's why I started with, if you want to invest the time, if you're kind of geeky, you want to go deeper on something, this is a great browser to start to invest into. But for the average person to get value out of this right now, it's just simply not worth it. It's definitely not 10 times better than Chrome or Safari, which at Deepwater is our measure of like what it takes for somebody to actually change their behavior. It's got to be 10 times better. Eventually it'll get there. We're not there yet, but we're going to keep using it and we're going to keep reporting back in terms of how the utility of Atlas is improving. On behalf of Pressure Points, bye for now.